Good morning, guys, from the Adirondacks. I'm out here just kind of unwinding, relaxing, boosting my mood. And that's what this video is all about. Some quick tips and hacks on how to improve your mood. Now, some of these will be anecdotal, just stuff that I do that works for me, may not quite work for you, but you could try it. And some of the other tips are actually based on science. So they actually will boost your mood. Now, the problem with boosting your mood is that implies that your mood is lower than it should be. So you don't feel great. You don't feel really motivated. So a lot of the time you don't even want to do the things that say I'm suggesting to you. But what helps me is knowing that doing any one of these things I'm about to tell you will actually make me feel better. And when I feel slightly better, I then maybe wanna do another one. And that makes my mood boost even more. And so on and so on. It can cascade into something where you finally feel happy, can get out of bed, can smile, can go about your day and feel like it's a good day. Now, one second here. Let me just get in close here. Now, a lot of you guys are new to this channel. I've had a crazy boost of subscribers in the last month. So I just wanted to say thank you. For those of you just stopping by, why not consider subscribing? That would be a huge help for me and the algorithm that makes people watch more of my videos. Oh, now, before we dive into the actual tips, maybe let's spend a little time talking about what the word happiness means. This is a basil plant. So the word happiness actually comes from a word that is kind of derived from the meaning of luck or random chance, as in haphazard or happenstance. So a lot of people back in the day used to think that happiness was derived from luck or divine fortune, not divine power. On the flip side though, there's a lot of people who also believe that happiness is basically derived from equation. It makes a certain level of dopamine plus the correct stimulation of a certain part of the brain and blam, voila, you're happy. But to be honest, the answer is probably somewhere right in the middle. Now, there are two types of happiness, really. Uh, and I kind of alluded to this in my last video where I talk about this happiness test. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. I think it's a fun little test that will help you figure out what's kind of missing in your life to make you happier. But anyways, I talk about how there's kind of the short term gratification and then there's the long-term fulfillment. Now both can lead to happiness but they're kind of different types of happiness. The first one which is the short-term gratification is called hedonic. I think I said that right and that's basically maximum pleasure minimum pain. Usually the kind of momentary stuff superficial but it does make you happy right. Think of like binge watching your favorite show, playing a new video game mindlessly, eating your favorite meal, eating snacks and sugary stuff. Doing that stuff does make you happy in the moment, right? But it's fleeting. And once it's all done or over, you don't quite have that happiness last. The other type, this long-term fulfillment, is called eudaimonic. Eudaimonic? And that's usually tied to living your life in line with your goals, having, you know, what I was saying before, sticking to things, right? Having the things that make you happy, but for the long term, not a bunch of this immediate gratification stuff. And these kinds of activities or things that lead to this type of happiness have to do with more challenging things, things that aren't quite enjoyable at the time, but afterwards feel like they were more this type two fun. So both of these will actually make you happy and put a smile on your face, but they kind of lead to two different types of fulfillment. I recognize that genetics play a large part in happiness and actually it breaks down into about 50% of happiness is genetic. Can't do much there. 10% is about your life circumstance environment. Stuff that is harder to change and, and for most people very difficult if not impossible to change. And then the 40% left over is changeable, which is great because even if you're able to change that one or 2% for the positive, that could make the difference between a good day and a bad day. Could be the difference between doing well and doing great or feeling cruddy or feeling okay. So with that out of the way, let's talk about these tips and how you can start improving or bumping up that mood to make you feel happier. All right, for our first tip, this one absolutely sucks. It's just so hard to do, but it honestly, makes such a huge difference. It's such a modern day problem, but it is so closely attached to day-to-day -day happiness. And that is 
do a digital detox. Yeah, you hear it everywhere and it's really hard to do. Trust me, I've tried, I've done it for little stretches, but it is tough. But one thing I can say is once you're in the thick of it, once you've given it a few days, you've really stuck to it, it really becomes the easiest thing in the world. You can really feel this weight lift off your shoulder. It's an amazing feeling and you're just like, wow, I don't ever need social media again. Even though you probably eventually go back to it. But I think being more mindful of how much time you spend on your digital devices plays a huge factor in your happiness. The less, the better. I think one of the most difficult things to deal with on digital platforms or social media or whatever is this thing that we do. We compare ourselves to others. It's really hard not to do it because we see people doing amazing stuff. That's all they post, positive things, right? People rarely post the shitty things in their life. So. We just compare ourselves to others and we feel bad when we're not doing that or at least trying to do something close to that. It's a mess. And so if you can remove that from your life and not even have any idea what people are doing, you just worry about yourself and you're happy and content with what's going on in your own life right now. Which leads me to the next tip, be present be where your feet are. I've done videos on this before and I talk about it a lot. It also makes your life more memorable, but it also makes you happier when you can really focus on what is presently happening to you at this moment. You can be happier with the result of that. Get out in nature, go outside, get exposed to that natural light. Studies show that being outside in an outside setting actually better complete and offer faster recovery from stress. So get outside. These next two tips are kind of together. And the first one is, and I love this one, I've been doing it for the last year and it really has helped me just feel more fulfilled with my life. And that is to reflect on your day at the end of the day. And specifically an actionable item you can do is in a journal or some kind of Google doc or something is take one memory from your day and remember it, write it down and think about it. It takes just a few minutes a day, but really sitting there and thinking about your day and trying to find that one special memorable moment is awesome and it's really rewarding over time. And on top of that, it actually makes your days more memorable. Now, if you're saying, oh, I don't have anything interesting happening to me every day, what could I possibly think about that special moment? Trust me, there is always something, and it doesn't have to be huge. It can be tiny. It could be the Chipotle burrito bowl that you had for lunch, if that really is what made your day special, that's fine. Or it could be, you know, a look that your little three-year-old gave you when you cracked a joke and he smiled at you. Or it could be something huge, like you went skydiving or you did zip lining or something like that. Tied to that is, this is the next tip, is to be more grateful. Practice gratitude. And an actionable item for that is to, maybe when you're reflecting on your day, is to find a few things, one, two, or three things that you're grateful for. Now, a lot of people out there are talking about, you know, have a gratitude journal and write it down every day. And that's great. I'm all for that if you can stick to it. But I don't think you have to go that far. As long as you carve out some time at the end of your day, five minutes to reflect on that one thing that was special to you each day and something you're grateful for, right? It could be the same thing you're talking about every day. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my, my job, whatever. But when we reflect on our day and we feel gratitude towards something, many research has been done on this and show that it makes us feel happier. Now this one works really well and I don't really know why, but it is something I do every day and that is do my memory training first thing in the morning. Like it's the first thing I cross off my list, but there's something that really just triggers me to feeling better about my day going forward when I know, well, when I do these mental exercises, my brain feels sharper, it feels better, it feels like it's in a better mood. And I've also done stuff that I'm working on, that long-term fulfillment stuff. I don't know if it's something to do with the memory training itself, but it definitely boosts my mood when I do it. So, if you've watched this channel, you've seen a lot of my tips, you're probably doing some of this stuff, but do it first thing in the morning. Not all of it, but at least get some of it done or work on it a little bit. And tell me what you think. 
and kind of in line with this also is getting my physical training, my exercise out of the way early in the morning too. That's just a personal preference. I like to get it done because then I feel like I've done so much before my kids are even awake or before I even have breakfast, right? Do my mental training, my physical training. I got the whole day ahead of me. How productive, right? That feels good, at least for me. All right, this one's weird, but it really does make me feel better. And that is knitting. Who knits out there? Who of my followers knit? Leave a comment in the description below. But I have knitted. I have knit. I've knitted. I have knit. I've knit. I've knit for, geez, since I, I think I learned how to knit in 2005 or something like that. And yes, I get some strange looks when I'm knitting on an airplane or knitting outdoors or knitting on a mountain. I've done that. There's just something about the calmness it brings, the kind of satisfaction you get from completing a project or completing some work and the knots and the counting of rows and stuff like that. For some reason, it just really makes me feel happy. Maybe that's just a general thing with things that are intricate that you're using your hands and your mind. But I mean, knitting is that thing. Tell me something else that's kind of like that. Crossing shit off lists. Holy hell, this stuff just makes me feel so good. Even if it's the most mindless task, like wake up my kids and I cross it off. There's something about that action that makes me feel accomplished and therefore productive and therefore happy. Stuff like do my memory training, go for a workout, get this call done, send this email, all those kinds of things. Once I cross it off, that feeling of crossing something off, whether it's digitally or by hand on a list is awesome. So make a list and start crossing shit off. You're welcome. All right, can we give uh, sleep a bit of love here? Without the proper amount of sleep, your mind's gonna be just absolute garbage. Um, the recommended time or amount of hours to sleep. We all know this number, but do we abide by it? Probably not. That number is seven hours. Now there's even studies that show that if you're getting under six or over eight, you're already gonna have some issues too. So even oversleeping has been shown to be associated with increased mortality rates. So get the right amount of sleep. Now it's tough to get to bed on time. There's Sometimes a feeling that you gotta get this done, you wanna stay out longer, whatever. But if you go into it thinking, I'm gonna get more sleep because it's gonna help my mood, and by improving my mood, I'll be able to get a lot more done, then maybe it's worth more than you think, right? Yes, you can get more done if you sleep less, but you're also gonna feel shittier. So why not sleep more, feel better about yourself so that you feel like you can do more when you're in that positive mood, right? Yeah. All right, let's talk about supplements. There are certain supplements that I take that help improve my diet, but also help improve my mental performance and mood. So for the last year or so, I've been experimenting with nootropics and I've really come to love them. And there's one in particular that I have been taking. I've actually partnered with them because I like them so much. That brand is Mind Lab Pro. You might've seen me talk about them on other videos. One of its added benefits is that it boosts your mood and reduces stress. Since before I was taking it, to now that I take it, I generally feel better when I'm taking this. And I've, I've actually even tried stopping it for a certain amount of time and then reintroducing it into my diet. And I notice a difference, I really do. We'll talk more about it at the end of this video. Now I'm not saying that is the one supplement you need to take, but there are supplements out there or certain foods that might work for you that actually help boost your mood. All right, the next one, this one's tough too, especially if you're not so good with your food and what you eat, but basically eliminate sugar or reduce it. Anything that causes inflammation in the body. I find that when I do my strict diets from time to time, I'll do a keto diet, watching my macros. One of the things that I gets pretty much completely cut out is processed foods and refined sugars. So all that food, if I eliminate it or limit it, I just feel better, I feel happier. Yes, at first I, I kind of crave those things and that doesn't make me happy. But here we're talking about kind of the longer term and I do feel this heavier sense of happiness when I don't have those kinds of toxins in my body. Once you've been doing it for a couple of weeks, you really will know what I'm talking about. So try it, do a sugar detox. You'll find that you notice that your mood is more consistently up. 
Buy experiences, not things. Do I really need to say more? I mean, a thing feels good when you buy it. Actually, honestly, for me, looking up and wanting a thing and then the purchase of it is really what gets me excited. And then usually once I have it, the excitement from it goes down pretty quick for most things, not everything, but most things. While an experience, I mean, yes, you enjoy it while you're doing it, but often experiences feel good for a long time after because you have that memory and that story and that thing you accomplished. Those tend to last longer. Plus you can share experiences with other people, which also adds to its value. Ooh, all right, guys, that's it. Do you feel happier? Well, maybe not. Maybe seeing my face does not make you happy, but hopefully some of those tips are helpful and I really encourage you to try them. Some of them are so simple, like go outside or, or sit by a window, but they actually make incremental changes to your mood. And in a day and age where mental health is of the utmost importance, I believe that we need to work on this. It's not something necessarily that will always come to you. And it's encouraging to know that there are ways to slightly boost it. Now, if you wanna boost my happiness, please give this video a little like. No, I shouldn't be preaching that. Giving me likes is actually a very superficial uh, kind of happiness. I get more happiness sharing this content for free with you guys and hoping that it makes someone's life out there better. Now, one of the tips I did talk about was this brain supplement that I take and support and really believe in. So let's talk about that for a little bit and then we can wrap up the video. This video was made possible by a sponsor that I've been working with for the last year and plan to work with for some time now called Mind Lab Pro. Now, I've taken supplements in the past, I've sworn by other supplements in the past too, and while they worked for me at the time, I had never experimented with anything like nootropics before. And Mind Lab Pro is the first nootropic that I've ever seriously dedicated myself to, to involve it into my mental training and preparation for competitions and memory feats and stuff like that. And overall, just to keep my mind sharp every single day. What I do requires a lot of that, so it's perfect. Now, what makes MindLab Pro so unique is that it's the world's first universal nootropic. So like, unlike any other nootropic on the market, which typically they just target one or two pathways, meaning they focus on like one thing, like memory or focus, you know, specifically one of those or a couple of those, MindLab Pro targets as many pathways as possible, six to be exact, to optimize all areas of cognition. Not only will it help my memory and focus, but it'll touch on the other aspects of my cognitive function to make it all around a more powerful, better tuned brain. Anyways, check them out. I love them. I take it every day and I do see a difference personally. That's my opinion. If you want to learn more about MindLab Pro, go to the website mindlabpro.com where you can see the link in the description and uh, see if it works for you. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Namaste. I will see you in the next video. I'm out. Mm -hmm.